Now, not all solders come with flux inside. Uh, as you see here, we've got two samples of different types of solder, and one of which is uh, rosin core, which has a flux inside and inside of the sheath of solder. And on the left, we have solid uh, solder, which has no rosin flux at all. Now, a natural question comes up, which one is appropriate for the work that I'm doing? Is the flux that I have enough for the job? Do I need to add additional flux and so forth? And the answer to that depends on what you're working with. When soldering electronics, electronics printed circuit boards begin with a nice clean metal surface. There's very little oxide to, to remove. The parts that go on the board are also clean. So it tends to be that the rosin core solder holds more than enough flux to clean the oxide from the parts as they're soldered. However, in the case of other parts, such as copper wire, stranded copper wire has a great deal more surface area, which oxides can form on, so there's a lot more material to remove and chemically react with. And in these cases, the rosin core solder might not be enough. It's usually a good idea to apply additional flux outside of the rosin core solder. Now with rosin core solder, you may run into uh, different types of rosin core solder. There's ones most common are perhaps the single core, such as this, which has a single cylinder of flux in the center of the solder. However, more advanced types of solder may have more than one core. And in these cases, they may deliver a little bit more flux and you may be able to work with uh, parts that are a little bit more dirty. They may deliver it more evenly. But in general, that's a, a specialized type of solder, which is not really that, that common you're most likely to run into the, the single rosin core solder such as this. Mm -hmm.